The great football coach Vince Lombardi that coached the Green Bay Packers, he used to begin preseason training every year the same way. He would stand up in front of his men, hold out a football, and say, Gentlemen, this is a football. These were NFL players. These were professionals. But his message was this. Gentlemen, we're going to focus on the basics. We're going to get really, really good at the fundamentals. And sometimes, as network professionals, we get really interested in the latest and greatest technology that's come out. But from time to time, it makes sense for us to take a step back and focus on the basics, to get really, really good at the fundamentals so that we're better going to be able to learn some of the new technologies coming out. So it's with great respect that I say to you, gentlemen and ladies, this is a router. A fundamental concept in your study of networking is the OSI model. If you've been around networking for a while, you've certainly heard of the OSI model. OSI, that stands for Open Systems Interconnect Model, and it's a model of networks that was put together by the ISO, the International Standards Organization. It's sort of like acronym soup. We have the ISO OSI model. And the OSI model is made up of seven different layers. And there are different memory aids to help you memorize these layers. And you would certainly want to memorize these for certification. If we start at the bottom, down at the physical layer, that's layer one. The physical layer is followed by the data link layer at layer two, and then we have the network layer at layer three, the transport layer at layer four, the session layer at layer five, the presentation layer at layer six, and then finally the application layer up at layer seven. And a trick to memorizing this is to memorize the acrostic, please do not throw sausage pizza away. Please do not throw sausage pizza away. The P in please is reminding us of the P in physical, the D in do reminds us of the D in the data link layer and so on. Again, presentation, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, application. If we prefer to start at the top and go down, we can remember the acrostic, all people seem to need data processing, a couple of different ways of memorizing the same thing. And we're going to be talking about what we do or what networks do at these different layers of the OSI model. And I've heard lots of different analogies, lots of different metaphors. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I love to use metaphors to explain complex concepts. And I've heard a bunch of metaphors surrounding the OSI model. And a lot of them involve sending a letter. And we write addresses on the letter, on the envelope, or we send a package, or we're going down different floors of a building and then going on to another building and going up the floors of that building. A lot of these metaphors I kind of have issues with. I spot some things that really don't ring true to me. The best metaphor that I've ever heard, I heard this probably about 15 years ago as I was taking a course on uh, Novell networking. And in that Novell course, they compared the OSI model to a bookshelf. That's what we're doing here. We're in front of one of my bookshelves, and we can think of the OSI model as a bookshelf it's a way of organizing different components of a network. For example, I've got one section in my bookshelf dedicated to books that I've written. I've written a lot of books for Cisco Press. I've got another section of my bookshelf dedicated to my Star Wars collection. And I also have an area of my bookshelf dedicated to those trashy romance novels. It's right here. There's nothing there. And that's the point I want to make, guys. You don't have to populate every layer of the OSI model. A lot of people get tripped up on this. They look at their specific network and they say, well, this is my physical layer technology. I'm using Ethernet. At the data link layer, here's my MAC address. At the network layer, I'm using IP. At the transport layer, I'm using TCP. At the session layer, I don't know what I'm using at the session layer, perhaps, depending on the application. Now, some applications, they are going to use a session layer protocol. Some are not. That's the point. We don't necessarily have to populate every single layer of the OSI model. My favorite quote on this came from a book. In fact, I probably have it here. It's the, uh, this is an older book. It's The Switch Book by Rich Seifert. I hope I pronounced that correctly. But in that book, Rich is saying that the OSI model, it's a reference model. It's not a reverence model. We don't have to revere it as something that has to apply to every single networking scenario. Not at all. It's just a general guideline. The OSI model, it was made to apply not just to IP-based networks, but also to 
things like IPX networks, Apple Talk networks. It was kind of a one size fits all model and we don't have to fit everything into that model. So first of all, I just want you to relax and don't think that everything has to plug nicely into one of the OSI layers. What we want to do now is start dissecting. Let's start tearing apart the seven layers of the OSI model and see what goes on at each layer.